Hey legends, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at how Starfield is still living red free in these ponies heads. Yes, I don't get it. They keep saying that no one is talking about Starfield, yet here they are consistently talking about Starfield. They literally can't say anything without bringing Starfield up. It's gotten to the point where now they're comparing it to games like Alan Wake 2, which is like a totally different game. It's like comparing Mario to Forza Motorsport. It makes no sense. I want it to make sense and it doesn't make any sense. That is how delusional these ponies have become because as far as I'm concerned, it is, you know, Starfield is living so red free in that noggin of theirs. There must be no brain in there because Starfield must be like occupying everything up there because everything they say, whether it's Nicola or this dude here, which we're going to come to because this account, this Twitter account shouldn't even exist, right? But yesterday I sent you lot a challenge of 500 likes. We just about missed it again but today i'm going to be setting another 500 like challenge on this video hopefully we can smash it but on with the video as we get closer to that 6,000 subs so if you do enjoy the video do consider leaving a like and a subscribe it really helps the channel and the video get noticed and just go out there to the wider audience right so first of all we're going to start with this dude here andre guterres or agro84 now for some background information this dude said that if Pentiment gets a certain percentage completion uh, ever. He will delete his Twitter account. He made that declaration and he made a promise. And so people actually did it. It hit that and actually went a two, three percent higher than what he actually suggested at the time anyway. And he immediately started backtracking saying, no, 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 no. So as far as I'm concerned, this guy, or who, I'm guessing it's a guy. It's full of shit. I mean, this is the type of pony that no one should ever pay attention to because at the end of the day, this pony is eating so much grass, it's not even grass anymore. It's shitting itself and then eating the shit that's coming out of it. But this is what he had to say. If Starfield is nominated for Game of the Year, the Video Games Awards will automatically lose all kinds of credibility with people there are only space for six nominees and starfield have no place in there i mean i hope jeff Keeley don't let the green machinery to persuade him into doing something crazy and he's trying to use this as a gotcha moment that alan wake got an 89 now this is crazy right like we are enjoying starfield i mean i've been playing Starfield on and off myself personally, but I keep going back to it because I want to just get further in and I'm enjoying the game, right? But at the moment, I'm trying to review Mirage and Spider Man 2, which isn't going well because of my illness. So that's actually put a really bad back burner onto it. But at the end of the day, how can you compare Alan Wake 2 to Starfield? The games are so monumentally different, but any game that comes out now, whether it's a PlayStation exclusive or a multiplat, they have to compare it to Starfield. Why do they have to compare it to Starfield? Because they are so butthurt that it's not come on PlayStation that they have to all congregate within that butthurt nation and start coming together and finding ways to completely downplay Starfield. That is literally it. This dude is a joker, but it actually becomes even worse when we look at this. So this dude, at the same time, is saying that Remedy is such an amazing studio, bro. I actually agree with the statement. Remedy is a fantastic studio. All their games are bangers. So, uh, you know, Control at 82. Alan Wake at 83. Quantum Break at 77. These are bangers. But Starfield at 83 isn't a banger. Ghost of Tsushima at 83 isn't a banger. Make it make sense, people. This is how deluded and crazy these ponies have got. They've lost their minds. All they have in their brains, well, I wouldn't even say they have a brain anymore because the way they act, they see something and they see something online and it's like, <gasps> that car is better than Starfield. McDonald's is better than Starfield. That motorbike is better than Starfield. 
that bird that's flying is better than Starfield. I mean, that's the derangement I'm seeing from these people because as it goes right now, they are getting completely and utterly crazy. You go over here, pure PlayStation. Now, I often clash with this dude. I don't agree with 99% of what he says, but at least he has some reasoning to it. But logically, Starfield shouldn't even be nominated. And, and Spider-Man should? Spider-Man should? I wouldn't even put Spider-Man in there. I mean, my review's coming out. I think it's a decent game. I think it's a good game. But game of the year? Nah, it ain't. It's, it's, it's missing. I mean, it just felt so generic. And it's just, I guess, it didn't wow me like everything else. But for sure, no. Uh, Final Fantasy XVI? Uh, I mean, the fr I, I still haven't finished that game because the frame rate is so bad. Put it this way, by the time I actually get to finishing it, the PC version will be out, but I'll probably play it on PC instead. Zelda was amazing. Wanda is absolutely fantastic. This actually could win Game of the Year. But again, they're comparing it to Alan Wake. How are you comparing it to Alan Wake? But again, they're comparing it to Alan Wake. Like, it, you can't make this shit up. It's crazy. And of course, you've got hyped. Now, there is obviously a few more, but I'm not going to go into them because I didn't want this video to drag on too long. But th th the sentiment should be there. And there goes Starfield's hopes for getting a game of the year. I mean, literally, this game, Starfield, has completely and utterly just ruined them. It has messed with these ponies' minds so much that all they can see is spaceships and constellations and all those cool ships you can build, all those cool settlements you can build, the planets you can explore, the wonders you can find, that is all they can see in their heads that they cannot get, that they are so upset about not having, that this is their reaction. Their brains, the pony brains, are at this point so screwed that all they can do is compare Spider-Man to Starfield. It's a different game, for God's sake. I mean, at least compare it to something that's remotely close to it, right? In the same genre. And now they're doing Alan Wake. Then they did Baldur's Gate 3. Then they're going to do something else. I mean, that new game coming out, um, Quantum Error, they're going to compare it to that too. I guarantee it. It's like, they keep saying, no one is talking about Starfield. Yeah, I see Starfield pictures and stuff pretty much on a regular basis on my timeline from people posting it that enjoy it but for these ponies to be talking about Starfield you know one and a half months later and still having that grudge you gotta feel that it's hurting them right now that they did not get one of the most influential games out there and the fact that they know that Elder Scrolls 6 is also going to be off the table and it's going to be a pc and xbox exclusive must be killing them and i bet all of them are going to turn around and say our oh, skyrim was rubbish too of course they are a game that you know i think a better cricket better critic is like what 95 96 but it was rubbish too is there gonna is gonna be their response and you can see it right and now that we have ABK coming along, oh, we never liked Call of Duty. That game fizzled out ages ago. The fact that it's been the number one selling PlayStation game for a number of years now, the fact that, play, you know, Jim Ryan said that if they lose ABK and COD, PlayStation could never recover because their first party games don't sell enough to actually make enough money back. They need to rely on third party giants like Call of Duty. Basically, now they have to rely on Microsoft games in order to be able to fund their own games because their players don't buy enough games to cover the cost of the development of their single player games. Mainly, just let that sink in for a second. Their single player games, like The Last of Us, don't break even. They didn't make enough to actually cover the costs of their games through sales even though the game has won awards and they're using the TV show to bolster with the remakes and everything else to make up that money that they are they actually lost because not enough people bought the game. 
And for that reason, that's why you see all these cheap remakes coming along. I mean, Jim Ryan himself said that they manipulated their player base with the TV show to try and increase the sales of The Last of Us in order to get them to buy it and so they could cover their costs, which they didn't cover in the first place. And so, with Call of Duty and Diablo and Overwatch, maybe not so much Overwatch, but at least with the other two, they're looking to get that revenue in so that revenue can cover their games for single player games because the development cost that they put into these single player story driven cinematic experiences is not being covered by the PlayStation fans. They're not buying enough. 6% of the player base isn't enough to cover the game. Don't forget, these games have a lot of money going into it. They put, I mean, these cinematic experiences cost a lot of money. For games to look that good and to be of that high quality, it costs pretty dollars. And therefore, they need that coming back. But their fans aren't buying their games. They're celebrating 2.5 million, but Spider Man costs more than that is actually bringing in. They still haven't broken even. Let them, I mean, that's crazy, right? They're nowhere near breaking even. So they need that Activision money. They need that Microsoft money in order to help them to fund games. So right now, the fact that they've got Starfield living rent-free in their head, it's crazy because what they should be looking at is the fact that without Microsoft right now, they cannot fund their games because they just can't break even because PlayStation fans don't buy enough games and a year-on-year -year sales of games has been going down just because spider-man sold 2.5 million i mean final fantasy sold 3 million right in its first three days or is it its first day and then tanked 90 percent of sales and it never really went up again spider-man will probably be the same anyone that was interested in it will pick it up day one my review is still going to come for spider-man i know it's a bit late but it is going to come because I am contracted to do that. But like I said, I'm enjoying the game personally. But the fact that Starfield is still living six weeks, eight weeks later, rent-free in these people's heads is crazy. And the one thing I would love, absolutely love, I mean, if it happens, I will be jumping for joy. And you, the video I'm going to make is going to be special. But if Starfield gets a Game of the Year nomination, Heck, if it wins Game of the Year, I think Mario Wonders is going to win it. But if it wins Game of the Year, I mean, even if it gets a nomination, that video is coming. But if it wins Game of the Year, oh my God, these ponies' brains are going to absolutely melt. I mean, it's going to melt the moment it gets a nomination. So it's going to be a fun ride. I really hope Starfield gets it because I think it absolutely deserves it. And I just want to see the pony's brains just completely explode because that is exactly what's going to happen. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is Starfield really living rent-free in these people's heads? Can they actually go a day without talking about Starfield? In fact, I can comfortably say that ponies are talking more about Starfield than we are. And at the same time, what they're doing is continuing the trending of Starfield. They're helping it via SEO, they're helping it via online matrix, metrics, and they're helping it via multiple other avenues just by continuously talking about it. If it was a game that no one cared about and no one wanted to see, it would have disappeared from people's minds long ago. And from Ring Any Bell, Fallout 76 Ring Any Bell, those lot, you know, people don't talk about them anymore. I mean, they, they rinsed those games within the first two, three weeks, and then it kind of died. If the topic came up every now and then, but no one cared about it, right? And, uh, you know, Fallout 76 has fully recovered and is actually a great game now. Anthem, unfortunately, is dead. But with Starfield, they'll be talking about it into 2024, 2025, because that's how rent-free that game lives in their heads. And that is how upset they are that they didn't get Starfield. And when the DLC drops, boy, oh boy, you're going to see them all out again in their herd coming across and trying to downplay what an amazing game it will be and what an amazing update it will be. But only time will tell how we react to that.
Right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Remain mentioned.